Oh, like, um, so that's the idea of maximum, that's the idea of source transformations. Okay, so we can further simplify this using um, more parallel, noticing that this is a parallel combination of 30 and 20 ohms, which gives me an equivalent resistance of um, 12 ohms. 1 by 30 plus 1 by 20 inverse gives me 12 ohms. Okay, that is this 12 ohms. And then 12 ohms multiplied by 1.6 so this is the fourth application of uh, source transformation. So this is the fourth application of source transformation where a 20 ohm resistance, okay? Not a 20 ohm resistance, but the parallel combination of 30 and 20, which is 12, a 12 ohm resistance with a parallel current source is converted to a 12 ohm resistance with a series voltage source. So that's the fourth application of source transformation. Okay, now what we can do is we can look at the um, total current flowing between these two terminals. Okay, these two terminals, which is 19.6 that's the voltage over here 19.2 volts okay that's the voltage on this side minus the voltage on this side is 6 volts over the total resistance between them is 4 plus 12 that gives me a current of 0.825 amperes flowing in this direction Okay, now I can see that um, I'm able to simplify all of this circuit, okay, into this circuit right here, which is equivalent, which is exactly the same. Now, I know the amount of current flowing in the um, six volt source over here. Okay, let's, 0.825 amperes times V gives me the power in the six volts um, source. That is what I set out to find, right? So I get, um, and the current direction according to the passive sign convention is going from positive to negative terminal. So it's positive absorbed power. Okay, so that's the idea. Questions? So then the purpose of this method is just for simplification? Yes. The purpose of this okay. method is an alternative simplification technique to node method, node voltage, and mesh current method. Very applicable. Okay, it's a simple circuit, so I'm not going to spend, a, it's a simple application, it's a simple technique, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Okay, so we looked at one example, where we applied the source transformation technique over and over again, four times. The resultant, uh, we have seen that it's a simplified circuit, and we can arrive at the same solution that we could have used that we would have needed to, we would have implemented using node voltage or the mesh current method or a different alternative technique. Okay. So that's the idea of source transformations. So let's look at something else now. Let's look at the Thepanin and not an equivalent circuit. Okay, but before we do that, let's, uh, take a look and see where we are in terms of in terms of uh, okay. today is the 9th of june okay so we are way ahead of schedule source transformations equivalent 
and then we are, I even intend to talk about Thevenin and not an equivalent circuits in today's class, okay? So what we can do is today is the ninth. So I'll talk about Thevenin and not an equivalent circuits using test voltage and test current method maybe as well, time permitting. So um, we'll finish that today. How about we take a break tomorrow, come back on uh, the 11th and do some more examples of Thevenin and not an equivalent and see if we can spend some more time next week as well. So we are ahead of schedule, okay? And depending on how much material I cover today, I may be able to um, give you off tomorrow, okay? So Thevenin and not an equivalent, it's a very, very useful method in examining the terminal behavior, okay? In other words, if I have a circuit, a black box, and I don't know what is inside or uh, the equivalent, or I, I don't know the circuit that is inside these two terminals. So one technique in understanding um, the behavior of um, a black box circuit is to look at the terminal behavior using Thevenin. So if I can, if I don't know what is inside the box, then probably I'm going to, um, if I can find a mechanism to represent all of this using a voltage source with a series resistance, then um, I pretty much know the terminal behavior. Okay, so in other words, the idea is, if I don't know what is inside this black box, okay? The argument of Thevenin's, equal, Thevenin's theorem is that, well, you don't have to know what is inside this black box, as long as you can represent all of that black box using one voltage source with a series resistance, which completely characterizes the, um, terminal behavior. So if you look at the behavior of this circuit at the terminals A and B, and that is exactly equivalent to the behavior of this equivalent circuit at the terminals A and B, then you pretty much um, summarized the behavior of all of this black box using a Thevenin equivalent circuit. Okay, so that's the idea. This is a very useful method in the examination of terminal behavior in a circuit. Okay, so um, Thevenin's and not an equivalent of a linear circuit is one way to create this terminal behavior view or an abstraction. Okay, one way to recreate the terminal behavior. This is the view of circuit's total behavior all of these circuits, the total behavior of the circuit can be simplified, accurately captured using um, one voltage source with the series resistance, okay? So this is the view of, <laughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. This is the view of circuit's total behavior. We don't have the direct knowledge of are the internal workings of the circuits, but we can simplify accurately capture the whole behavior using one voltage source with an equivalent resistance. Okay, that's the idea of Thevenin equivalent. So then we call this guy, the Thevenin, let's call this circuit one, is the Thevenin equivalent of circuit one. Can we look at some examples? Okay, if the circuit can be reduced to an independent voltage source with a series resistance, then the equivalent circuit is called the Thevenin equivalent. So this is the Thevenin equivalent. 
Okay, so our effort will be, if somebody asks you to calculate the Thevenin equivalent, we will use different techniques to get the value of R Thevenin. What is the value of R th? And what is the value of V th for a given circuit? Okay. For a given circuit, if we find the um, R Thevenin and V Thevenin, then we have found the Thevenin equivalent. So Thevenin equivalent calculation amounts to calculating R Thevenin and V Thevenin. Okay, this circuit is the equivalent of the actual circuit. Okay, in the sense that a load across the terminals a b will result so if i were to connect a load rl across the terminals a and b that would behave exactly like the black box to which i'm um, calculating the thevenin equivalent if that black box had a load resistance so this is the circuit and this is the thevenin equivalent of the circuit Okay, this is circuit one. This is the equivalent of the circuit. Okay, if I were to connect a load across this black box and across this Thevenin equivalent, that sees the exact amount of current and voltage. Okay, as far as the load is concerned, both of these are exactly the same. And that's the idea of Thevenin equivalent. Questions, please. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, to find the Thevenin equivalent, we have to find the Thevenin resistance, R Thevenin, and then second one is the Thevenin voltage, V Thevenin. All right, <clears throat> R V Thevenin is defined as open circuit open circuit voltage across a and b okay so we don't connect a load here we don't short it here no what we do is we open circuit the terminals r a and r b and find the voltage that is appearing across this um, terminals. What is the voltage between these two terminals? Okay, um, V, that's the idea of V Thevenin, the open circuit voltage between these two terminals, okay? Now, in order to find the R Thevenin, Thevenin is the system, what we do is, um, we find the equivalent resistance of the circuit seen from when I'm looking into these terminals, what is the resistance? Okay, seen into the terminals A and B. Okay, so here is an example. So like I mentioned, there are two things we need to do. What is R Thevenin? What is V Thevenin? Once we have R Thevenin and V Thevenin, we can write a circuit, this guy, R Thevenin, in series with a V Thevenin, and I can call this the equivalent of this circuit. So by the time we completely solve this circuit, okay, so there is some V Thevenin and R Thevenin. So we found V Thevenin and we found R Thevenin, and I say that this circuit is the equivalent to that circuit over there. Okay, so let's go about finding the value of R Thevenin and the value of V Thevenin. How do we find that? Okay, the first thing I need to do is um, to find the open circuit value VAB. 
okay the open circuit uh, terminal voltage VAB okay there is no current what we want to remember is when there is this is open circuit when this is open circuit what is the current flowing in here what is the current flowing through the 4 ohm resistance zero zero that's the current flowing through the 4 ohm resistance two there's no voltage drop across this 4 ohm resistance so VAB which is the open circuit voltage is exactly the same as V1 right across this current source okay so the idea is that because there is no current flowing in the 4 ohm resistance there is no voltage drop here so VAB is exactly same as V1 Okay, there is no current flowing through the 4 ohm resistance because it's an open circuit. Because um, the resistance through an open circuit is infinity. Okay, the current flowing is infinity. So now we have to find out V1, which is the voltage dot across the 3 ampere um, current source. So what is the um, voltage across the 3 ampere current source? That value is the Thevenin equivalent, that is the open circuit voltage, okay? So the voltage across the three ampere, this is current, three ampere current source is V1, which is exactly same as VAB. So if we find V1, we find V Thevenin, which is the same as VAB, okay? So that's the idea. So in order to find the voltage across this guy, okay, we want to apply the node, nodal analysis, okay? We apply the nodal analysis um, at this, let me call the voltage here to be V3 amperes, okay? So V3 amperes minus 25, minus 25 volts over five gives me the current flowing through that branch plus i want to add the current leaving this branch so which is v3 amperes supposing this to be ground by 20 ohms okay gives me the current flowing in that branch okay plus so this guy let me color code them carefully so all of this is shown here, okay? Okay, this guy, all of this guy okay, is this, okay? Now there is uh, the three amperes here, that's the three amperes there, okay? So at that node, at the red node that I showed here, this guy, which is the same as this guy. They're both the same nodes, okay? So I'm using node voltage method, adding up the currents, KCL, at node P3A, okay, at that node, okay? Why am I ignoring this branch? That's because the current flowing in that branch is zero, right? So I ignore that branch. Once I do that, I get a value for VA to be 32 volts. Okay, so this V3A, this V1, which is the same as V3 amperes, that has been derived to be 32 volts. So now I have the open circuit voltage VAB. Okay, I have the open circuit voltage VAB it is the same as V Thevenin. So the first step is done, okay? There are two steps. Find the V Thevenin, find the R Thevenin, okay? What's the V Thevenin value? What is the R Thevenin value? Once I do that, um, I should be able to write the Thevenin equivalent. So in that process, I just calculated the V Thevenin. 
Does that make sense? Questions, please. So in order to get V thevenin, all I have done is to apply KCL at that node, V3A. So purple current is the current flowing left in the 5 ohm resistance. Green is the current flowing down in the 20 ohm resistance. And blue, 3 amperes, is the current flowing up. Okay, so I carefully um, choose the directions of the current and then um, add them up to give me a value of zero. Then I get a value of V Thevenin equals to 32 volts. So that's my first step. Now the next step would be to find the value of R Thevenin. Okay, so we need to find the Thevenin resistance now. Okay. In order to find the Thevenin resistance, what we do is deactivate. all independent sources. Well, there are two independent sources here, right? There's a voltage source and there's a current source. So how do you act deactivate the voltage source? Is by short circuiting the terminals. I deactivate this, okay? I replace this voltage source with a short. And when it comes to the current source, I deactivate it by open circuiting it, by open circuit. Okay, so there are two independent sources. I want to deactivate the voltage source and I also want to deactivate the current source. The way I do the deactivation of a voltage source is by short circuiting it. And the way to deactivate a current source is to open circuit it, okay? So the equivalent is going to come up to something like this. The equivalent is going to come out to something like this, okay? Earlier, I had a voltage source here, plus minus, and a current source here, okay? I short circuited this. I replaced the voltage source with a short, and I replaced the current source with an open circuit. Okay, so then what I have is 5 ohms in parallel with 20 ohms. So that gives me 5 ohms in parallel with 20 ohms, which is 4 ohms. In series with another 4 ohms, gives me 8 ohms. So the R Thevenin is 8 ohms. So all I have done is to deactivate. You see, deactivate the independent sources. So in order to deactivate the independent sources, so let me write it out here to deactivate. Maybe it is somewhere in here. To deactivate. Oops. Okay. So to deactivate. A voltage source. What we do is we short circuit it. To activate, to deactivate a current source, we open circuit it. Okay, that's all we need to do. Deactivate a voltage source, deactivate a current source. Once we do that, um, then we have removed all the sources. We should only be left with resistances. Then it comes down to finding the parallel series equivalent, which is in this case, um, 8 ohms. Make sense? Okay, so here is the um, 8 ohms that I just found here, 8 ohms resistance, that's the series resistance, 32 volts that I found for the Thevenin equivalent. So there I have the Thevenin equivalent of the entire circuit to be this guy. Questions, please.
Okay, so this is the Thevenin equivalent of the circuit. Okay, so if a circuit can be reduced to an independent current source, so that's the Thevenin equivalent. So we can also talk about Norton equivalent, which is nothing but um, current source current source version of a Thevenin's equivalent. Thevenin's equivalent was voltage source with a series resistance. Okay, this is Thevenin. Norton is nothing but a current source with a parallel resistance. Okay, so the process is still exactly the same. How do we find the Norton equivalent? Well, you have to find RTH first. The second thing is to find the I Norton. Earlier, the two steps were find RTH and find VTH. Okay, now what we do is we find RTH and I Norton. Okay, I Norton can be found in two ways. We can calculate I Norton from the Thevenin equivalent using source transformations. Okay, a Thevenin equivalent, a voltage source with a series resistance, can be converted to a current source with a parallel resistance where the resistance remains the same. The value of the current is VTH over RTH. Does that make sense? Okay, so here is the Norton equivalent, N-O-R-T-O-N -O -O equivalent. Let's see if we can. So to find the Norton equivalent, okay, earlier to find the um, Thevenin equivalent, we did for Thevenin. We found the open circuit. voltage okay Thevenin equivalent is defined as the open circuit voltage but Norton current I Norton is defined as the short circuit and we are going to do some problems on this current let me go back and remind you okay the amount of current flowing in a short between these two terminals, okay? That's the Norton equivalent current, okay? So if you go back, the voltage between these two terminals, okay, when they're open circuited, that voltage is V Thevenin, okay? But if you want to find the Norton equivalent, all you have to do is do the opposite. You short circuit them. When you short circuit them, what is the um, voltage between the two? Short circuit voltage is zero, right? Because there is no voltage drop across those two terminals. So when you short circuit them, and find the current flowing in this branch, that gives you the I Norton, okay? So if you're given a circuit like this, if you're given a circuit that looks like this, then you open circuit these two terminals, okay? And find the voltage across them, then that is the Thevenin voltage. The other thing that you can do is take these two terminals, put a short between the two and find the current flowing in here. Then you find the not an equivalent current, okay? So depending on whether you do an open circuit or a closed circuit, you have a not an equivalent or a Thevenin equivalent. So that's exactly what I said here. Thevenin voltage is open circuit, okay? So 
not an equivalent is short circuit okay and we still go about finding the thevenin resistance exactly the same okay finding the thevenin resistance is exactly the same as earlier by deactivating all the sources so let's look at that so let's find the not an equivalent of the circuit that we discussed earlier okay if you think about it 25 3 amperes 5 24 that's exactly the same circuit i'm thinking it's exactly the same circuit as before so there is 25 20 the amperes five and four so um earlier we found the thevenin equivalent of this circuit let's find the not an equivalent of this circuit okay given a circuit that looks like this we are asked to find the not an equivalent the first thing we do is place a shot see place a shot this guy okay I'm placing a shot between A and B that was not there before. Okay. If I have a circuit that looks like this, I'm going to place a shot between A and B. Okay. I'm going to place a shot between these two terminals to find the not an equivalent. Okay. So um, this is what I do. I place a shot between A and B and my aim would be to calculate the current flowing in this shot okay once i do that i'm able to calculate the not an equivalent current so here my goal is to calculate rth and i not okay so in order to find the amount of current flowing in this branch i shorted it okay i left everything else the same except that I converted this series, resist, series resistance and voltage source into a current source with a parallel resistance, source transformation, okay? So I have done a source transformation. Okay, 25 by five will give me five amperes. And the 5 ohm resistance, this 5 ohm resistance is exactly the same here. This voltage source is converted to a current source here. Okay, so that's the source transformer that I have done. And everything else is exactly the same. Okay, everything else is exactly the same. Okay, now what I have done is to um, combine this 5 ohm and 20 ohm parallel resistances into this guy okay so the parallel of 5 and 20 ohm resistances is um, the equivalent 4 ohm resistance here okay now what i can do is to further simplify this now my aim is to find the current in this branch okay so i short circuit that i not it's what I wanted to find out. So I short circuit that. And now 8 amperes of current is, is dividing between two resistances, 4 ohms and 4 ohms. So it is natural that given the resistances are exactly the same, this guy sees 4 amperes of current. Okay, this guy is four amperes of current. The current division tells me that when the resistances are the same, the ratio of currents is also going to be the same. So this is this branch is going to see four amperes of current. And this branch is going to see exactly four amperes of current as well. Okay, so now what I have done is this four amperes is the current flowing between the shot. Okay. So this is the four amperes of not and current that I wanted to find. Okay, I not therefore is four amperes. Does that make sense, please? Yes, it does. Questions, please. Questions, please. Uh, so the all only... I have done. Sorry. Uh, 
so the only question I had was the combination of the two current sources. You just put them together. Yes, correct. So there's a three amperes and there's a five amperes current. Both of these are supplying current to this node. Okay, so parallel, um, I simply added them. So voltages, voltage source, add in series, current sources, And they're in parallel. They simply add. So that's exactly what I did. Thank you for um, for clarifying that. So this five and three amperes, I connected them as eight amperes. I, I, I put them together as five amperes, eight amperes. And then um, I have these eight amperes of current. Okay. Um, dividing between the to four ohm resistances, okay? That is because I have a shot here. I I placed a shot there, okay? So we found the V thevenin, uh, I Norton, to be four amperes, right? What is the R thevenin? I don't have to do the maths again. I already solved that R thevenin earlier, right? I can simply, use the value of the R thevenin that I got earlier. What was that, eight ohms? It's the exact same circuit, right? It's the exact same circuit. I deactivated the voltage source, deactivated the current source, and found the R thevenin to be eight ohms. So that I can reuse that value here. So that value can be reused here, eight ohms. I Norton is four amperes. So what I have is this guy. This is the I Norton, which is four amperes in series with the R Thevenin. So this circuit is exactly equivalent to this circuit when you consider the behavior at the terminals. Okay, as far as the terminals are concerned, all of this circuit is exactly the same equivalent as all of that circuit. Okay, that's the idea of not an equivalent. Okay, so let me do something here. Let me add a page here. I'm going to um, redraw this. For this circuit, Okay, for the circuit here. Okay, I found the not an equivalent to be this guy. Four amperes in parallel with eight ohms. Right, this is the not an equivalent. Well, the not equivalent always be a current source in parallel with a uh, resistor and then a thevenin equivalent is yes. always going to be a voltage source in series with the resistor that's just a yes. given exactly okay yes when i say not an equivalent i mean a current source with a parallel resistance okay and a, a thevenin equivalent is um, a voltage source with a series resistance Okay, so let's, what's the value for this is I Norton, right? And this is R Thevenin. So this is R Thevenin again, which was found to be eight ohms. What was the V Thevenin that I found? Thirty-two. Thirty-two volts, okay. So this is the Thevenin equivalent. As you can see, using source transformation, I can do, I can convert this voltage source with a series resistance 
into a current source with a parallel resistance. So in order to get the value of the current, the current, the resistance value is still going to be the same. So if I use a source transformation, the current here is going to be 32 over eight, which is four amperes. As you can see, this is exactly the same as the Norton, okay? So finding the Thevenin equivalent and doing a source transformation gives you the Norton equivalent. Okay, there are a couple of ways in which we can find the Norton equivalent. We can find the Norton equivalent independently, or we can find the Thevenin equivalent and do a source transformation. The same applies to Thevenin equivalent as well. I might as well find the Norton equivalent independently, do a source transformation to arrive at Thevenin equivalent. Okay, the important thing to realize is a voltage source in a series resistance can be converted to a parallel current source with a resistance. Okay, so that's the idea. Okay, questions please. Okay, let's see if we can look at a, a couple of examples. Okay, finding the Thevenin equivalent using a test source. Okay, finding the Thevenin equivalent using a test source. Let me see if I can solve this problem. So it's a little different here. So um, let's do an interesting problem, a little bit challenging, okay? We'll find the Thevenin equivalent of a circuit with the dependent current sources. We'll find the Thevenin equivalent of a circuit with dependent current sources and it involves using a test voltage or a test current method. At this point, I want to find out from you, are you ready for a, a bit more theory or do you want to take a break and then come back and do that? Do you, um, it, we, I can continue here and, and find a, a solve a problem using um, a test voltage, test current method to find the equivalent resistance. Um, in order to estimate, in order to arrive at the Thevenin's equivalent. But what do you guys want to do? Do you want to continue here or do you guys want to take a break, come back the day after and work on that? Um, <clears throat> I'm up to continue for the rest of the day if necessary. Sure. Um, sure. But I don't speak for the whole class either. That's fine. I mean, um, anybody else? I think, I think uh, if there is some interest to continue, I, I'm glad to continue. I just don't want to um, overwhelm with too many different concepts. Okay, so in order to clarify what we did so far before we move further, let's see. We looked at source transformations. Where a voltage source with a series resistance can be converted to a current source with a parallel resistance. Then we talked about Thevenin equivalent. And then we talked about Norton equivalent. Okay, in order to find the Thevenin equivalent, we have to find VTH, RTH. RTH, VTH is the open circuit voltage. And in order to find the Norton current, we have to find the I Norton which is the short circuit current, okay? And find RTH. Now let's do an example problem of finding a Thevenin equivalent method, okay? This is typically useful when we have um, a dependent voltage source or a dependent current source, okay? Let me see if I can um, uh, 
a uh, let's see i'm going to add a page here okay so i'm going to redraw this circuit the idea is this guy plus minus five volts okay there is two kilo ohms there is the independent there is the dependent current voltage source 3b okay and this guy is um, i x is the current flowing in that branch there's a dependent current source the i and then there is the resistance here 25 and then we are supposed to calculate the thevenin equivalent of this guy okay plus minus b a b okay and uh, I know there is a V term over here, and that's shown as plus minus V. Okay. Similarly, there is a term I over here, and that is shown as um, the term I in this branch. So the question is find the Thevenin. Thevenin equivalent of this circuit okay so it is different from what we have seen before in the sense that um there is dependent okay there is dependent voltage source this guy and there's a dependent current source which is this guy okay so let's see how we can find in order to do that we do what is known as a test voltage method. Okay, a test voltage method. So here is the idea. I still want to find RTH. I still want to find VTH, right? In order to find, that's the fundamental. When I'm trying to calculate the Thevenin equivalent or the Norton equivalent, all I have to do is to find the Thevenin equivalent voltage and the um, Thevenin equivalent resistance. Okay. In order to find, so the first thing is let's to find RTH. Okay. In order to find RTH, you remember the step that we did earlier was to deactivate. Let me go back up and show you what I have done. When I'm calculating the um, Thevenin equivalent resistance, okay. When I'm calculating the Thevenin equivalent resistance, what I did was to deactivate the independent sources. Deactivate the independent sources to find the Thevenin equivalent resistance. Okay, that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to deactivate. The independent sources here to find the RTH in this circuit. I'm going to deactivate all independent all independent sources. What are the independent sources here? What are the independent sources? I believe it's just the uh, five volt supply. It's the five volts. This is uh, five volts um, voltage source here. How do you deactivate that? In order to deactivate a voltage source, I have to short circuit it, right? So I'm going to short circuit it and write this guy as two kilo ohms, okay? and replace that five ohms with the shot, and the rest is all going to be the same, okay? So plus or minus three V, so this is not three volts, this is three little V, okay? And then there is uh, 
there's a current 20i, okay, 20i, and then followed by 25 ohms. And then, that's, that's what I have here. So now, um, so we deactivated all the independent sources. Now, in order to find RTH, I employ a technique, okay? So what I do is I introduce a test voltage, V test, and look at the current flowing in, I test, okay? So in order to find R7, that's the resistance here, my effort has been to find R Thevenin, right? So remember, this is my first step I'm doing in order to find R Thevenin. I cannot find it directly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a test voltage, V test, and look at the test current, I test. So R Thevenin will be V test over I test. So this is the test voltage by test current. So this is how I would find out the value of R Thevenin, okay? Test voltage, test current. R Thevenin is defined as V test over I test. What is R Thevenin? It is nothing but the resistance looking into the two terminals here. A and B are the terminals here. What is the resistance looking into that terminals? Okay, so all I have to do is apply. So let me show some. Uh, let me show this. This is I given to be I, right? This was given to be I. And this is given to be little v. Okay, so what I'm going to do is to apply KCL at that node. Okay, let's supply KCL at the right hand side. Okay, KCL on the right, right hand side. On right hand side, which is uh, this guy at that node, KCL at that node. Okay, so there are different currents. There is a current of 20i. Okay, there's a current flowing down here. And there's a current of I test coming in here, right? So applying um, KV KCL at this node on the right hand side, let me know, call this as right hand side node. Negative I test is the current that's entering the branch. That should equal plus, okay? The current leaving in the branch right here, that's going to be. 20i and the current leaving in this branch right here will be v test okay remember that's v test over 25 ohms right because that's the voltage that i'm applying here okay remember i'm applying a v test voltage over here so v test so all I have done is to express all of KCL at that node, all of this is equals to zero. Therefore, I get a value of I test. <clears throat> Hold on one second. So I get a value of I test plus 20. Um, V test over 25 plus 20i equals to zero. So from this, I can, the current I from the left hand side, uh, carefully defined with the current direction, um, can be found out to be. So if I can find out the value of i from here, it's going to give me negative 3vt over 2. Okay, so all I have done is to um, give the value. Okay, in the left hand side, okay, what's the voltage? That's 3 VT, okay, over 2 kilo ohms, 2 kilo ohms, okay, voltage over current, 
will get voltage over resistance will give me the value of the current over here so i is the voltage on this guy three volts by the resistance two kilo ohms in that branch okay so now what i can do is i can plug this value this expression for i into this okay so i can use that and uh, i test plus 20 times i so it's a matter of simplification now add another page okay so now um, i'm going to plug this value of i into the equation above i'm going to leave negative it as is okay plus v test over 25 i'm not going to change that either the only thing i'm going to do is to replace this 20 i with negative 3 vt over 2 kilo ohms okay all i have done is this is coming from the left hand side this is coming from the right hand side okay this is from the left hand side equation now all i have done is to divide the voltage by the resistance gives me the current okay now all um, um, that needs to be done is to replace this i okay replace that i um, with the expression that we got from left hand side okay all of that equals to zero okay now what i can do is i can see that it is negative I test plus V test over 25 ohms plus 20 times negative 3 VT over 2 kilo ohms equals to zero. Now what I can do is I'm going to factor out VT, VT by. So when I factor out VT from this term, I'm going to be left with 25 ohms minus factor out vt from this term i'm going to be left with negative 60 over 2 kilo ohms both of these terms have vt in common i'm going to take it to the other side i have it over here so the argument here is in order to find r thevenin i said I want to do the V test over I test, right? V test over I test. Okay, let's see. Um, that's exactly what I um, set out to find out. V test over I test. That is what I wanted to do. Okay, so in order to do that V test over I test, I'm simply going to rearrange this equation v test over i test i'm going to bring this i test to the denominator of the left hand side i'm going to take all of this fraction all of this expression towards the right hand side of the equation so once i do that i'm going to end up with an expression v test for i test equals to one over all of this okay one over 25 ohms minus 60 by 2 kilo ohms okay so it's going to give me a value of 1 over 0 0.04 minus 0 0.03 which comes out to be 100 ohms so rth has been found to be 100 ohms does that make sense so all i have done is so let me recap what i have done before that let me um R thevenin. Okay, the first step was to find the R thevenin. In order to find the R thevenin of this circuit, all I had to do was to deactivate the independent current sources, independent voltage sources. So I short circuited that independent voltage source. Okay, once I short circuited that, there is no way for me to find it numerically. So in order to find it um, using a different technique, what I did was I introduced a test voltage and a test current at the terminals. This is the terminal R, where I wanted to find RTH. 
right? So my argument was, in order to find RTH at this node, at these two terminals, I apply a test voltage and derive an expression for V test over I test. Okay, that's exactly what I have done. Once I um, applied the test voltage test current, then to the right hand side, I applied KCL and to the left hand side, I simply applied Ohm's law. Okay, so combining these two equations, combining these two equations, I massaged these two expressions to give me a value for V test over I test. The rest is all um, algebra and manipulation, which gave me the value of R Thevenin to be equivalent to um, to be equivalent to 100 ohms. Does that make sense? Yes, sir, it does. So that's the idea. Um, that is how we can apply. Um, so the, the question is, how do you find the, how do you find the um, uh, Thevenin equivalent of a circuit? Okay, Thevenin resistance. In order to find the Thevenin resistance of a circuit with dependent sources, with dependent sources, all you have to do is apply a test voltage test current, massage the equation to arrive at VT over IP. Okay, we'll stop here. Is everybody all right with taking a break tomorrow? Uh, yes, sir. Any other, any other, um, thoughts do you want to any other thoughts on whether you want to take a break tomorrow or not yeah that sounds good all right so um given the fact that we are a little ahead of schedule um and i don't want to run um, way ahead of myself we'll take a break tomorrow we'll come back on friday and uh, and continue from where we left off we have a little bit of luxury of time so we will continue to um, work on some more problems Okay, so take a look at this. All of these notes should be available to you on uh, Canvas, uh, on, on Google Drive. Okay, so as you know, the videos are also uploaded to YouTube. I will try my best to see if I can salvage today's class as well. Um, if not, I'm sorry, my um, system sometimes crashes because I like to log in from two different systems using the same. Um, I, I, I'm presuming that's the case, okay? Um, if not, I'll try my best to salvage some uh, video notes here, okay? All right, I'll see you folks back on Friday then. Have a good day, sir. Take care.